Hello everyone, welcome back. You're watching Empyrean Galactic Survival episode 187. I'm Enigmius and today we're continuing construction of the NCC-1031 USS Discovery from the new Star Trek series, Star Trek Discovery. Last episode we were working on the bridge attached to the central sphere in the middle of the saucer section. And now we're we're going to be all over the place, actually, today. Uh, we're going to be doing some work on the, the bridge, and we're going to be doing some work on the support arm. I'm calling it an arm because I can't really think of anything else uh, that describes it. It's basically the structural element that holds the saucer section uh, and keeps it firmly attached to the central hull area. And you can see in the bottom left corner, we've got this little image, another... Um, crop from a screen grab I I just can't seem to find images where the part that I want to display is not in shadows it's the weirdest thing I know they're out there I know they exist but when it comes time to actually sit down and find them it's just it's just a thing so when it comes to the underside of this arm you're probably just gonna have to take my word for it but basically you can see it kind of attaches to the central sphere where that light blue sort of light is and then it curves down and kind of has this elegant transition to it in the direction of that central structure. And we want to try and preserve that. And that was actually um, before I started doing this specific layout work here, I went back into my little SketchUp uh, layout planner that I had done where I imported the diagram of the ship so that I could measure everything and kind of get a feel for how things were going to go together and I did some measurements so that I could do my best to preserve that curvature working its way back towards the central section. On the underside of that arm, it basically follows the contour of the saucer section. It doesn't actually make contact with either of the rings because the rings have to be able to spin freely without grinding off the arm, I guess it would be one way of looking at it. So that makes it a little bit on the easier side when it comes to trying to figure out how we want to approach the design of the underside of that arm. It, we just kind of have to follow the contour. And one thing, you still can't really see it especially well, but you can at least see the lights on it. The arm above the gap between the small ring and the large ring kind of goes down into the gap a little bit. Not very far, just where the uh, the rings had that sort of bevel in towards one another. It kind of goes down a little bit into there. So we'll make sure that we um, use that guide as well, that sort of design guide, that that's what it wants to do in that particular spot. But one of the things that I also wanted to address after the last episode was this dome that's basically above the bridge, directly above the bridge uh, in our case. Trying to preserve th this whole idea that it's glass and, and we want as much of it to be glass as possible, but at the same time, we don't want it to be any more glass than is absolutely necessary. It's this weird catch-22 uh, where we can have everything we want as long as it's not what we want. In this case, I've removed some more glass and I've replaced the structure with something a little bit more in line with the shape that I wanted to go for. In the end, uh, I, I end up much happier with this specific design for it. It's kind of hard to appreciate it when you're up close, uh, but when you get farther away, it definitely stands out as a better alternative to what we had at the end of the last episode. And it didn't require a massive overhaul to do it, it just a minor one. <laughs> so now we're back to this structural arm and we've got the layout done. So now it's just a matter of kind of spreading things out, turning them into a 3D kind of shape. We've done this many, many times before. We do the layout and then we start extending off of it and building what we need to build. And now I'm mostly going to be focusing on this underside. You can see I'm kind of looking around and trying to make sense of all the different uh, shapes and contours and things that we want to follow. The gap between the saucer section and the structural arm is not a, a big one. It's it's a fairly small gap. And in fact, you see a lot of images um, in the show where there's lights actually on the underside of that arm that reflect off of the saucer section 
obviously it wasn't on those lights weren't on when we took the, the image that we were using today but you, you get the idea and that's something that I plan on incorporating into this as well there's a lot of things that we can do with lighting in this that will take the design that much closer to uh, the the original just by the lighting alone I was thinking about it today and normally I try and light things so that you can see what's going on uh, and if you can you know if I can do a little bit of environmental lighting to create a bit of a mood or something like that then I'm definitely not afraid to do that but in this case there are a lot of lights on the exterior of the ship that placed a certain way we can probably duplicate the same sort of pattern that they create on the surface of the ship and bring it, like I say, that much closer to a feeling of um, completion and conformity to the, the actual ship itself. Before we can do any of that, however, I just wanted to make sure that we got this contour as close to right as possible. It ended up being a lot more difficult than I expected it to be. I guess difficult isn't maybe the best word. Um, just because you're trying to get things as close as possible and you're trying to do that with sections that are two blocks wide or even so in some cases three blocks wide, talking about the 22 and a half degree slope blocks, because you place one and then realize that you can't place the other because you were a little bit too close to the saucer section and it would actually have to uh, occupy the same block space as another little wee narrow block on the saucer section that he hadn't really thought of. So you end up having to remove things and move them around or the other option that uh, occurred a little bit frequently was having things too far away, not close enough to what was going on. Uh, you know, we have the saucer section and we've got this arm above and you look at it and the gap is just bigger than you really think it should be. So you have to remove things and sort of put them uh, a little bit closer and maneuver them around, which is why this actually ended up taking a fair bit longer than I thought it would just because of that, that just that spatial kind of consideration that's so easy to overlook. But in this case, fortunately, um, you know, I was expecting it to just take a few minutes and it wound up taking like 20 minutes, which is still not that big of a deal. But you can see how we're sort of following that contour and we've got things uh, starting to work pretty well. We've got that section in the middle in between the two rings where it's kind of going down following the contour of the bevels to a certain extent as well. And then we're almost done uh, bringing this all the way to the point where it's free of the saucer section. And then that begins the point where we get to start making decisions about how we want to do the design because we have to do that central hull section differently than the way that it's set up with the, the actual ship. We don't have the space to, well, we have the space to put the central hull section where it is, but then we would have to, uh, at the very least, change the support arms that hold the nacelles. And I decided if we're going to be changing things around, let's just treat that central hull section and those support arms as an element that we can just do whatever we want with. We'll keep the saucer section, we'll keep this support structural central arm, and we'll keep the nacelles and everything else in the middle we can basically do to suit our liking. So that's what I plan on doing. And in this case, I decided um, one of the things that we're going to do, and we'll just start roughing it in now, is we're going to have the support arm wrap around to the underside of the saucer section as well and do a couple of structural elements under there just for the sake of looking kind of a little bit hopefully interesting. There's... Um, the saucer on the front of Federation ships, the Bizarre Collector something. I don't think I got that quite right, but close enough uh, for those who know can at least empathize with what I'm trying to accomplish. Uh, this ship has one. Uh, I ha actually haven't seen any recently that uh, didn't have one that I can think of. So we're going to try and incorporate something like that into the design as well. It's not going to be obviously in the same position as the one uh, that you would see in the, the series, the actual discovery. But I want to make sure that if we're going to be changing that central part of the ship, that we don't overlook that sort of key detail that's such a prominent feature on so many different ships in the Star Trek kind of universe. That would seem like a bit of a cop-out because it 
to be completely honest, it doesn't sound like the kind of thing that's going to be a whole lot of fun to implement, especially not the way that I plan to implement it. But we're going to see. We're going to do what we can. And, uh, you know, I, I try to avoid adopting a permanently negative attitude about certain aspects of the design of the builds that I'm working on because it, it just kind of it becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy. We can acknowledge the difficulties um, and I, I like to joke about them from time to time, but in terms of actually feeling like uh, it's hopeless, pointless, ugly, stupid, or dumb, this is not really a productive way to approach these things. We're almost done with that support arm, uh, at least the underside. And then I wanted to spend a little bit of time on this backside of the dome because we, we, we spent the basically the last episode doing the front side. Uh, and then we did a little bit of time uh, redoing a portion of that front side. And now I wanted to make sure that going into uh, the remainder of the structural work on that arm, that the back side of this dome was ready to go because there's going to be an intersection between the arm and the back side of the dome that's not going to work if we haven't done the back side of the dome. So we'll get that sort of squared away duplicating to large extent the same design for the dome the glass bits on the back side as we have on the front just because uh, i'm happy with it now and we can get things set up quickly and then if i decide later that i want to change things then i, I can uh, it's not that large of a piece that it'll take all that long but I, i'm feeling pretty confident that we'll get a certain ways before we realize we have to go back and change anything here and this also um, is representative of one of the changes that I wanted to make. In the last episode, we had these structural arches. Nothing compared to what's on the actual ship, but we did have the one across going from side to side. And I wanted it to be a little less bulky. So we did that uh, replacement work a little bit earlier clearing out the side to side one and then making sure that the one on the back coming towards the, the structural arm is also not big and bulky because that's going to be uh, one of the things that just bugs me looking at it and seeing that big and crappy bulky thing. So, so we changed it and now we're just doing a little bit of refining, making sure, getting those last few pieces into place and then we're going to uh, make some refinements on the sides of the dome to try and get it. Uh, I mentioned uh, and even did the layout in the last episode for having us cut off that sphere at sort of an angle going down from back to front. And then in the process of getting everything set up, we didn't really preserve that, but we're going to reinstitute some of it now uh, just because it's the way it is uh, and it, it kind of has a look to it that I like. It's just a matter of getting everything, everything to fit in place and uh, fit together and behave nicely with one another. That's, that's the goal. So I'll let you finish watching the last little bit of this. The next episode, we're going to finish off the top part of the structural arm, extending back. It's, it's a little bit narrower on the top than it is on the bottom. And then we're going to be spending some time uh, following that, working on our design for that central hull section before we work our way out to the nacelles. And then once the nacelles are done, it'll be polish, paint, texture, and blueprint. So... If you want to be notified about the next and future episodes in this and other series, easiest way to do that is to subscribe to my channel or follow me on social media. Links for social media are always in the information section below the video. Feel free to leave your comments and feedback. Thanks for watching, guys, and take care.